It's Brunel Week. I need to bring my friend out. A perfect opportunity for Irene Harrison's Year 5 and 6 class from Stoke Bishop Primary in Bristol to undertake some design and technology. They'll be visiting Brunel's famous suspension bridge. To the shape of the bridge, here we have the chains coming up over the towers. They'll be using some software available via the Teachers TV website. And they'll be given a taste of practical bridge design when they are challenged to build a bridge out of food. Now, what, what sort of bridge is this? Suspension. It has no nothing. Welcome to the Clifton Suspension Bridge. My name is Mike, Mike Rowland. Irene Harrison tackles at least one design and technology topic every term, and with Brunel's suspension bridge on their doorstep, a school trip is a must. So, you all know about the bridge, do you? The children already know quite a lot about Brunel because of his link with Bristol. So they have a, a lot of background knowledge, and I think it leads quite naturally into the engineering aspect of his work. What does the word suspension mean? The design, the suspended. Um... It's suspended, well done, which means it hangs, OK? When you get on to a, a, you go to an adventure playground and you get on the wire bridge, what's the first thing it does? Wobbles. It wobbles. Well, this one's just the same. And I'm going to show you a bit later on how it wobbles. Right. Watching their progress is Simon Botton, deputy head of Crossways Junior School in Thornbury. Simon is shortly undertaking a unit on bridges with his own class and is interested to learn from Irene's approach. That's the first thing that strikes me really is just the importance of that, of that visit. We often do kind of history visits, geography visits, science visits, but to actually do a DT visit and looking at it you think, well actually, yeah, that's such a valuable use of, of that resource and that place. Um, and actually having somebody there to explain it to you, having a guide. Can you imagine the shape of the bridge? Here we have the chains coming up over the towers, dropping down. Here we have the chains up over the towers, dropping down and then up over the other side. Now if we put weight down, it's much harder for their shoulders to come forward because they're braced by the chains. And that's really what the suspension bridge is. The other thing that struck me, I was thinking, well, what, what do I actually remember from when I was at school? And I probably remember the people who came to talk to me and the trips I went on. I can't probably tell you a single DT lesson I was in. Uh, apart from the ones where actually we'd done some really exciting stuff first outside of school, which really got me thinking about it. Can you work it out, all right? Line up something in the distance. Line up something with the barrier, and then you'll see the bridge tilt. You'll see it move ever so gently. Oh my God. One, two, three, sizzling sausages. Sizzling sausages. sausages. Having experienced the bridge firsthand, you can use your headphones, children. There is sound. There's, there is sound. If you want the to children now try their hands at some computer-based interactive tasks. Details of how to access this package at the end of the program. Bridge. Mm -hmm. right. Then, uh, yeah. It's quite hard that bit. Get that and then place it right underneath. There. That's it. I bet Brunel would like it like this. Yes, yeah, it's nice. It doesn't cost anything. <laughs> I think when we think about online activities, teachers tend to kind of recoil a little bit as though there's some kind of sinister scheme to replace uh, anything practical in real life with these digital things that we post through wires to children. I think you've got to look at it a slightly different way. Build, build the real suspension bridge yeah. on a computer. It makes the children perhaps model things that they couldn't do in real life. And also it means they can fail and do it many times and undo it very easily. So that's kind of where the IT comes in, but you'd never wanted to replace all the other things you were doing. Test. A moment of truth. It works. Success online and it's break time. Fresh from their lunch, Irene sets her class an unusual challenge. If you look at the question I've put on the board, can you use a variety of foods to build a bridge? Now, you don't know what foods are available, 
once you've been told what the foods are, you still might not have a clue. But we've got someone with us this afternoon, Mr Fletcher, Lucy's dad, who's going to talk to you a little bit about bridges and about engineering principles. Parent Governor Nigel Fletcher is a bridge engineer, an ideal expert to lead the activity. These are a truss bridge. First, he introduces the children to different types of bridge. Arch goes over the top. And then the choice of materials. And what we have to do is choose the right material to suit the shape of bridge. In Brunel's day, Brunel did pretty much the same thing. And he had materials like stone, timber and iron to build his bridges. To build theirs, the children have a choice of potatoes, malt loaves and breadsticks. But the principles are still the same. Taking into account the properties of the raw materials available, they have to choose the most appropriate items to use. These are going to be our cable. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. Yeah. What's going to be that? First we've got to decide what bridge we're actually going to do. Yeah, that'll be quite easy. They have considerably less time, however. Brunel took years to build his bridges. They have 30 minutes. Say this is like flat, it looks like a road, so we can use that as a road going across. And this looks like string, so like to hold up and down. So it depends on what it is to use. I think using the food is just absolutely brilliant. Um, when I was first told about it, I thought, oh, is that going to be a bit gimmicky? Is it going to be, um, is there actually mean real learning going on there? But the way it's described, they know the tactile qualities of the materials they're dealing with, they've eaten them and they're familiar with them. So what does that feel like? But actually, to start thinking about how strong they are, will they bear a load? It really gets them thinking about how is the forces on this bridge going to stop it falling down and uh, I think that's just so clever. It's something I'd be really tempted to try actually. What sort of bridge are we making here then? Wow. So how, how, are, you, how are you going to hold it up? Uh, we're using these chains. And some breadsticks. Yeah. We're just measuring where they're going using the lasagna. Yeah. OK, so don't move it. Yeah. Can't even remember you got to put another... Is that a good thing or a bad thing that it stretches? Remember what we saw when we were on the suspension bridge as the cars went along, what happened to the bridge? It wobbled it up and down a little bit. That was so stiff that it couldn't go up and down. That might be dangerous, yeah? What else do we need these? I think it's very interesting how the teacher takes on the role of the facilitator rather than director in this activity. Colby said we need them going down there, yeah. What else? And that, it says to me just how important really carefully thought out questioning is in, in the success of this activity. And I think that's something we all have to remember when, when, when we're planning these sorts of things. What I enjoy about DT is the, the, the wealth of ideas that the children come up with. So what have you got to do to that to make it tight? How are they going to tie these back? Well, that, I want you to tell me, how are you going to tie them round? They always astound me with their ingenuity and how quickly they can come to get through the design process. We've got a beam bridge and a suspension bridge, right, but what if it was suspending when we have a suspension bridge? This is suspending it. What is it that's suspended? What is it that's hanging? Yeah. And is it hanging? The children are much more open when you're working with them in a group situation. For me, that's really interesting because I get to find out then really what they're thinking about the activity and can tell at first hand whether they're enjoying it or not. What are you eating? I feel that they can then accept me as part of the team, whereas if I'm at the front and they're at their desks listening, it's, the relationship isn't as strong. OK, you've, in five minutes, Nigel's going to be coming around and we're going to test each of the bridges. OK, so you've got five minutes. Go.
moment has come. First thing I'd like to say is I've never seen a bridge designed so quickly as, as you lot have done. We're going to employ all of you. Just like a real bridge, the structure needs to be wow, tested. Can their that? bridges support work? Nigel's favourite train set? That is definitely safe enough to take people yes. off. Right. I think the children have learned lots of things this afternoon. Firstly, I think they've learned that they can't just rush at a job. They've got to think very, very carefully about the design. It's a bit wobbly. And experiment before they venture into the final structure. Yep, that works. I think they've learned to work really well together and to use each other's strengths. This looks a very good suspension bridge. And as well as that, the children have learned so much from the professionals that they worked that with. That's fantastic. What sort of bridge is this? Suspension. It has no nothing. Yeah, no nothing. 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 It's, it's actually, it's a cable stayed bridge, look. Because these, these are cables, they're not it hasn't got any hangers, has it? <coughs> They're just cables. I'm holding. absolutely astounded at the success rate of these bridges. When I was looking at it halfway through the afternoon, I thought, oh, crikey, we're not going to have one that can hold um, Nigel's train set. But I, I've, I was wrong. I was proved wrong five times. Before we go out for a break, I want you to just think for a minute about how you worked in your groups. Did you recognise that someone in your group was really good at a particular thing and asked them to do it? I overheard someone say, Joe's really good at pleating the, the green strings. And I know that he got to do that job in this group because he was an expert at it. Did you do that in your group? Did you share the work out like that? What has changed about you during the course of this afternoon? What have you got better at? Have a a very good way of doing a plenary there. I, I like the fact that she was not just referring to the DT skills they've done, but the kind of generic learning skills. Um, getting the children to think, okay, if your group was successful, what was it you did to make your group successful? I think what I've seen, really, is just a very different way of doing about it. You, you imagine that, that for your DT project, you have to do some big elaborate um, bridge or structure made out of something wooden, and you've got to do lots of sawing and drilling and all very grand things like that. And actually looking at that, I'd say 90% of the DT skills you're trying to teach were done in that very simple way with very simple materials. I think the learning they've done in that very specific way, looking at those materials, has been really, really valuable. I'd certainly have a go at that and try and pass it off in my own classroom. What's the name of it? If you've built up an appetite for building bridges, why not visit the Teachers TV website? Excellent. You'll find an accompanying programme to show in class of Brunel himself showing off his famous works, and there's a link to Brunel's Britain, a specially made interactive resource available free to Teachers TV viewers.